which pertain uniquely and exclusively to the very existence of God. Amen? God is the only one that is like that. Nothing else is uh, like that. So, and the first one, um, the first one that can be said of God is that He is the self-existing one. Amen? Self-existence. Now, this is the problem when, um, this is the problem of those uh, many atheists. Because for atheists, they said, okay, who created man? God. Who created God? <laughs> so then that's a problem because nobody can answer who created God. So if somebody created God, then he's no longer God. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, and, uh, <coughs> The very idea of God, the better idea of God is that He is self existent, meaning nobody created Him. So, how would that happen? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Amen. But uh, His name, Exodus 3 14, is the Ben. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he and he said, Thou shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. Okay, so uh, so his name is I am that I am. So I am that I am. So I am is H Y H, or you can I think their pronunciation is a T H Y E or Haya, depending on how you read it. Haya, Haya. I am, I am. But there is a cell. Haya, cell, Haya. So. Um, so the now there is very there is a uh, something uh, if uh, if the uh, name of God they give him to Moses I am that I am meaning he is always I am there was not a point in time when he became I was or I will be he is always I am so mean God has no beginning because everything he is always I am amen. So it tells us that God is always present, amen? always present, and He is always existing. John 5, 26. John 5, 26. For as the Father had life in Himself, so had He given to the Son to have life in Him Himself. Okay, so the Bible tells so the father has life in himself. So uh, the father don't have to get life because he is life. Mm -hmm. Amen. He has the life in himself. So that's why he is existing. Amen. Without any reason, without any cause, he just existed. And uh, Romans 11, 33 to 35. Romans 11. 33 to 35. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. So actually these are called rhetorical questions. I mean, these are questions that uh, cannot be answered. Uh, who had been his counselor? The answer for that is man. Uh, who had known the mind of the Lord? The answer is man. Who had first given it to him? And uh, shall be returned again to the one who given him? So the answer is none. There are, these are rhetorical <laughs> questions. So we, the answer to this is that has always in there, amen. Always there, always um, existing. 
So that's the first, uh, the first uh, natural attribute God is that He is the self-existing one. Now, uh, this uh, the second attribute is a very uh, normal. Uh, we know about it. All knowing. Omniscience, I mean, not, not omniscience, I mean, omniscience. omniscience. Uh, Romans 11, uh, yeah, okay, so this is the one we read already. Oh, oh uh, the depth of the richest spot of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable, how his judgment and his ways past finding. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the knowledge of God cannot be searched, meaning it's infinite, you know? uh, and, uh, and, and Job 37, 16. Uh, mm -hmm. Dost thou know the balance of the clouds, <coughs> the homeless word of him, which is perfect in knowledge? So God knows um, the, 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 the laws of nature. Right? He is the one who has given the laws of nature. So he knows about those things. Yeah? Uh, 2 Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole world, uh, throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward them. Amen. So, uh, see, God knows everything. Nothing is hidden from God. To and fro uh, on the earth. It's just like he scans the whole earth continuously. So, uh, omniscience, omniscience, omniscience of God, you know? Another one, uh, John 3.20. First, first John 3.20. First John chapter 3.20, for the power heart from the mass, that is greater than the heart and knows all things. Okay, no, God knoweth all <coughs> things. You know? That's the uh, omniscience of God. That's why, you know, the uh, the world tried to duplicate God and they make Santa Claus God. Uh, he knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you are awake. He knows if you feel better or good. So good for goodness sake. Okay. So, uh, and they basically make, uh, make Santa Claus a God because he tried to copy all the, uh, all the uh, power of God and um, Omniscience, amen. Actually, uh, Santa Claus is almighty, omniscient, and omnipresent. <laughs> uh, like, uh, he is almighty. He will give all the gifts throughout the world. How heavy is that? Uh, and he can carry it. Amen. So, the, he is almighty. And uh, in uh, in uh, basically in uh, 12 hours, he can visit all uh, seven, maybe one billion households in the world. So he's basically present in two places at the same time. Uh, so uh, the, those two characters of God are given to Santa Claus. Omniscience. Now this is the most uh, spectacular of the power of God. Amen. Uh, Matthew 1926. In Matthew 1926. Okay. But God beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. Now the uh, omnipotence is uh, He has infinite energy. Amen. Basically He can do all things. Uh, we know He can create things. And uh, he can uh, uh, create things from nothing, and uh, and uh, he can uh, uh, carry all things. He can sustain all things. And uh, I mean, God basically, God is all powerful. Uh, the name of God. What's the, what's the name of God that means Almighty? <coughs> Anybody guess what's the, what's the name of God uh, as Almighty God? 
Kahit sa Hebrew na yun. Sa Hebrew of Almighty God. El Shaddai. El Shaddai. The Shad actually is the breast. Like when you have very big, like a muscle man, your breast, your your like a your 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 breast is big, <coughs> muscular. Uh, basically, the sh- shada is basically pertains about the uh, the torso of a man, a very strong man. Amen. So, uh, because we cannot we cannot describe uh, Almighty God, it always described as anthropomorphic. What's the meaning of anthropomorphic? It's like based on human. Okay, so based on human, amen, perception. So, anthro, what's meaning of anthro? Where we get the word anthro? Is? Man, amen. Uh, more. Like, more, amen, the form. So, like a form like a man, amen. So, when we say the hands of God is anthropomorphic, God has no hand. But, to, to be able to be to uh, relay unto us that he care for us, he will touch us, he will put, put us in a hand of his hand. So that's called anthropomorphic description of God. God sees all with his eyes. God has no eyes. And yet he sees all. So when we say the eyes of God, even though God has no eyes, for us to be able to, to understand it, uh, the Bible gives us an anthropomorphic uh, description. Amen. So the same, all powerful, amen. All infinity in relation to energy, amen. So you got all energy. Amen. Do you know, like I, do you know what's, uh, do you know the level of civilization? Anybody know the level of civilization? We are. Level point twenty five civilization. If we can if we can harness all the energy of our own sun, then we become a level one civilization. If we can harness all the all the energy of our own galaxy, we are level two civilization. So uh, <clears throat> so it's energy, but all of those energy by galaxies are produced by God. So God has infinite energy. Amen. That's the meaning of all, uh, all powerful, amen. Omni, uh, uh, did somebody read 42 verse 2 already? Job, Job, Job 42 verse 2. So I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be removed from you. God can do everything, amen. So, uh, God uses, um, energy, not, not, not limited to three, but, um, it's uh, very evident in this uh, thing, God's creative power. In, in Genesis 1 1, in the beginning, God created. Let's go there. So, in the beginning, in Hebrew, what's the meaning? What's the, how do you say in the beginning in Hebrew? Very shit. So, B, 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 as in beta or B, very sheep, amen, very sheep. So, uh, in God, uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Okay. So, this one is a uh, bara. Bara, actually, the name, the name is uh, to bring about. To bring about from nothing. Not to make, amen? To bring about. To create. To create from nothing. And so that's the meaning of, even though bara is also used as to make, <coughs> produce, the uh, majority of the uh, the word bara is to uh, uh, create or to bring about from nothing. So, uh, so God, uh, God can bring about something from nothing. You know, like if, if you make a, you know, when uh, early in mathematics, do you know early in mathematics there is no negative number? 
And uh, the person who uh, invented the negative number, I don't know who he is. I don't know who invented negative number. Uh, that must be a very great person. <laughs> because when you have nothing, there is nothing less than nothing. But now we know that there is something less than nothing. Uh, then how can you imagine something that less than nothing? So you have less than nothing, then you have nothing, then you have something. So even science uh, tell us uh, the analogy of God. You know? God can create from nothing to less than nothing to something. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, God, uh, uh, Colossians one seventeen. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Mm. And, and by him all things consist. So, what's the name of that? Uh, okay. Nothing. Hold together. Form. Standing. So, uh, it's basically in, in our notes, it is a sustaining power. After God created something, it holds it, it sustains it. It will not uh, disintegrate. You know, when you when some people uh, make something, they have to really hold it, and then after they took their hands, it will fall. But God has the sustaining power to sustain what He created for a long, long time. Uh, like uh, there is the uh, law of thermodynamics, not the first law. I think it's the second law of thermodynamics. Everything will. Uh, will turn from order from orderly into disorderly because disorderly is the stable state of things. Order, when things are in order, some a force is holding it. But when it is disorder, the force is no longer needed because it can be anywhere. It can go anywhere. The same as the planets. The planets are in order because the sun is holding it in place. You know what happened if suddenly the sun is gone? Then the planets will, instead of going around the sun, the sun will just go in a straight line. It go somewhere. So by, by Venus, by, by Jupiter, they, whatever is the direction, of it will go there because the, uh, the sun in the center is the one that holds it. I mean, it holds it, that's why, uh, and the moon is being held by the Earth. So, so it's like uh, it's holding together. Uh, and uh, uh, another one, uh, Psalms 105, uh, 107, 25, 29. Psalms one oh seven. One zero seven. Okay. We can learn that the reason for stoning them was ways they are. They mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distress. He maketh the storm a calm, a calm, for that the waves that are still. Tell us that how God controls nature. God controls nature. And, uh, and we don't even question it. And we don't even question it. But it's, far, it's very possible that uh, the same water that we drink at one point in time, Jesus Christ drank it. Because uh, the water goes in cycle. After we drink it, it will go, uh, go and everything, and then go to the sewer, and then uh, and go to the lake again, and then got evaporated, rain somewhere, 
Paul in uh, uh, somewhere, anyway. uh, and uh, we drunk again there by some people, and so on. We want to rest in recycle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, God is the one controlling the cycle of things. Another one. So, uh, omnipotence of God. I mean, He is all powerful. He got infinite energy. He can control all things, sustain all things, and create all things. So that's the whole cycle. You create, you sustain, and then you control. Now, uh, another one is the uh, omnipresence of God. God is everywhere. God is a spirit, amen? Meaning God, can, God cannot be contained. As long as there is a space, God is there. <coughs> Because God will be everything. So uh, if you if that is the explanation of God, there cannot be two gods in the universe. Because God fills all the universe, there cannot be two of them. And so that's why there is only one God. So uh, He is present uh, everywhere. So God, you know when God created, God created what? Matter? Space, uh, like matter after it comes with energy, matter and energy, time. time. So God has power over all those things, and this is the process. This is the uh, this is the, uh, uh, the this is the uh, God's power over space. He is a uh, he is everywhere. You know? Psalms one thirty nine seven to ten. God is everywhere. David said he cannot go from anywhere else because God is everywhere. Amen? Now, uh, now uh, there is only one God, but the Father is present in heaven. Now the Lord Jesus Christ used to be in earth, now he is also in heaven. But the Holy Spirit is uh, here on earth, but he is also in heaven. So he's in here and there, but he's also in heaven. Uh, he is inside every believer. So the Holy Spirit indwells every uh, believer. So God is everywhere. And uh, so if God is everywhere, amen, uh, then you cannot hide from God. So, God is in hell. Amen. But he, he is there only to watch. And he don't hear their prayer. He don't do anything for them. He's just there, making sure everything is in order. So, uh, so but uh, if you pray in heaven, he will not answer because he did not give those people a promise. So, God is, um, God, if you go to a nightclub, God is there. But uh, he will not do anything, amen? He will not do anything, yet. Uh, he don't want you to be there. He is there so that 
to know, let you know that you cannot go there because he is there. Like when we are children, uh, uh, you will go to a store to buy something like a cigarette. Oh, my father will know if I buy a cigarette from here. He is the friend of uh, he is the friend of uh, the store the store owner, so he will not be able to buy. It's like the father is not there, but it's the same. He's like there. He will know. Uh, so you want to buy to a place that your father do not know, and uh, he, your father will not go there. But God is our father. He will go everywhere. So there is no escape. Amen. Even in the uh, even in his promises, he's there. And lo, I am with you always. So uh, in the great commission, he is always with us. Now uh, we will stop there. Okay. Study, study. We have no exam next week. No, no, no exam. <laughs>
Brother Eric. It is read our scripture reading for today. We will go directly in our scripture reading. Let's open our Bibles in the book of Psalm, uh, chapter 115. In the book of Psalm, chapter 115, verses 12 to 18, we will read responsibly. Psalms, chapter 115. We will continue to read this chapter, verses 12 to 18. The book of Psalm, number 15, verses 12 to 18. Amen, are you there? Amen. Amen. The book of Psalm, chapter 115, verse 12 says, The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless us and the Lord will small The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. You are blessed, Lord, and may have heaven. Heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath been given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any of the Lord. Verse 18, let's read, read all together now. Begin. We will bless, bless the Lord from this time forth and forever. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Our next song. Let's continue praising the Lord and singing uh, song number 23. We will sing, There is Power in the Flesh. Song number 23. Here we go. Will you be free from your burden and sin? This part in the blood, part in the blood. Will you be free from the things that we need? This wonderful part in the blood. There is far, far, wonder why you want in the blood.
start planning the party, I have to fill the glass. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> So uh, that's one of our projects. We have too many projects here in uh, spring. You know, with, uh, yesterday I started it, but I got busy looking up. <coughs> so I did a good job. Then I, I went to uh, Bishop Delegates. I'm, I'm just I'm just close my eyes because I'm busy. <coughs> so my, my wife is the one who arrived. My, my husband is, uh, is, is he okay? Will he be okay? It's a blue. It's a blue. It's the one who. And he's a very strong man. He's like the same as, oh. size as Ryan. So, and he, when he grip your shoulder, you can read it if it's working. <laughs> so you, you know, when they when they uh, do some something, it's painful. You it's working. I remember when I'm working in Africa. In Africa, we send. Vitamins. Okay. But the Africans, they're very suspicious people. <laughs> they taste it. It has no effect. So we, we, we bought Bitrex. It's a very bitter compound. We put it in the vitamins. It has no uh, medicinal value, but it makes the medicine bitter. So when uh, they eat the vitamins and they try to chew it, it's very bitter. Oh, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> they can feel the medicine. <clears throat> It's the same with the, when he clasps my, uh, my my neck and my shoulder, <coughs> we feel the pain. After that, it seems it feels good. <coughs> so uh, praise the Lord, Amen. Today is May. Remember some of the years when I was small, the Christmas trees were were tall. I used to laugh. I used to play. You know the song. <laughs> I heard when I was born, and Christmas Christmas is born. Born. <laughs> if, you, if you know that song, it means you're old. <laughs> because that song is 1970s. <clears throat> okay, so uh, like in YouTube, I'd like to uh, get the jokes of uh, President Reagan. Reagan likes to, uh, in his speech, he always have a, a joke. You know? He has this joke. In the, in the Democratic Convention, there is a guy who's carrying kittens. So he said, buy democratic kittens, buy democratic kittens. <laughs> some are bought and some are not bought. So after two weeks, uh, there's a Republican Convention. So he brings the remaining kittens there, buy Republican kittens, buy Republican kittens. But there was this... Um, uh, news, you know, news reporter said, hey, "You're the same guy in the, Republic, in the Democratic uh, Convention. You're selling this as a, a Democratic kitchen. Why are you not selling this Republic kitchen? Oh, two weeks has passed. Their eyes are now open. <laughs> <laughs> so now the Republicans, <laughs> before their eyes are closed, so they're Democrat. They're Democrats. So. Okay, so um, America, vegan." This is an opera. You get very good at delivering jokes. Yeah. Many of the jokes are sharing for me. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, praise the Lord again, amen. And um, the days are, are uh, coming fast, and we are in May. And, uh, and uh, in two more weeks, we will have another holiday. I think Victoria <laughs> Day. Victoria Day. 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 Third yeah. Monday of May is Victoria Day, so that's another day to look forward to. And I hope we have a day that, that's a Mother's Day too. It's a, it's a, it's a second Sunday or next week? Next week. Next week. Next week. Next week. Next week. Uh, so we will, we will not have an island uh, by next week. That is okay. So uh, and, uh, let's hear from you, amen. Let's hear from you guys. Okay. Uh, this is the bed. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm here to be with you. It's good to just know your friend because it's just concerning me. So I thank the Lord for all the blessing, uh, wisdom, strength, and protection, and answer prayer, especially answer prayer for Sandra. Uh, Sandra is a believer, so I pray for her. Please continue to pray for her. I think the Lord, uh, because we always under the skin, so I think the Lord 
for that. And I thank the Lord also uh, my sibling in the Philippines. We are doing good. And my husband and my children. For my nephew, the first of our nephew, his name is Johnny. Actually, I think he was 40 at his age. He got an operation in his head. I think some like a Yesterday, <coughs> he fell down and then he rushed to the hospital and he got uh, some, some wound and then the, the doctor uh, did a uh, speech or something. Please include him in our prayer. His name is John, our uh, first nephew. Uh, I give up all the Lord. Thank you for all your prayers. Amen. <laughs> and I'm presenting spiritual adjustment from this place uh, for yes, a simple amount of family for maybe I, I don't hear any uh, news from them, so it's a good news. And then uh, please continue to pray for confirmation and also for fertility. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, she said she's not, uh, she always gets sick. And uh, she's, she, uh, her desire is to go back to Toronto and then I, uh, I told her that uh, we will come back here and then she said, no, I mean, the, the sad thing is I already don't have my apartment and I have to go down in there. So yeah, please continue to pray because she said it's not feeling, it's not feeling good in there. And uh, she's like, oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I think send praise to the Lord for continued continue good health, continued work, and please continue to pray for the good health. And they are very approachable. They are always willing to help. And uh, yeah, they I 
uh, I've raised and tested there's some people like uh, they, uh, the other people know that they're not caring about me because they just want to work. But there's some people uh, can understand you and even they are so busy, they're just going to go up to you to answer your questions. So I uh, thank God for that, for those people around us that uh, is a uh, good one. And also, um, uh, I just uh, want to inform you guys, we didn't come last Friday because I have a work and then Kate also no work. The time, but suddenly when she gets back, she, she gets back inside because she needs to uh, be the doctor's better, otherwise she can go to work also normally. The, the this is quite, uh, quite strict to the medical reports this time. And then when her monitor saw her there, she has not to be here because there's that much people. So we don't have one inside because one is not allowed so we cannot go back into the second and also, I want to inform you this coming uh, two weekends coming. I'm going to come because my lawyer will go to the fight again. They have trust me, they have triggered a bunch of people for uh, 10 days. So I'm going to come personally, but I'm going to come to you. So continue for your uh, flight and uh, for the coming vaccine. And also, please continue to pray for my family. And then, uh, I want to say so. Yeah. But, uh, uh, would like to. Uh, Pray for the recovery of my wife and my kid, so that they will be okay now. And I'm praying also for the prosperity of my new job, my company. It will be and uh, the good relationship with my coworkers at work, and then uh, good uh, help for me and strength to do the job and uh, knowledge to to make everything go right. For his goodness and for his faithfulness to each and every one of us, I praise him for uh, I am over a year now, uh, a year and two days since I came here. And I praise the Lord for giving uh, my wife peace for over a year. Thank you. 
So uh, let's all stand up and uh, we will have a, so a story. You know, there's a song in the Bible. There's a story. Uh, uh, 1,000 years BC. <laughs> we, will, uh, we will read uh, Judges 16, 4 to 21. We will read it responsibly. Bible. And it came to pass afterward, the love of a woman in the body of Saul, whose right? name was Delilah. And the Lord of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Enticing and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means he may prevail against me, that we may die mine to afflict him, and will give me every one of us eleven hundred and eleven hundred. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth. 
and where we don't mind is the bomb completely. And some of them are they don't mind is just a then the Lord of Ephesians brought up to her seven green weeds, which have not been dried, and Sibam came with them. Now there are men lying in wait, abiding for anything. And the seven weeds, the food which is 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 the and Delilah said to Samson, Behold, thou art mocked me, and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, where we thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, They find me fast, and you will never burn. Then shall I be weak, and be another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes, and bound him therewith, and said unto him, The Philippines be upon thee, Samson, and there were liars in the way abiding in the chamber, and break them from off his sons like a thread. And the Lord said, Samson, Peter, you're not going to mock me. And I'm going to mock you. Tell me where thou mightest be found. And he said unto her, If thou even didn't set him up, thou mightest be found. And she fastened it with a spin and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awake out of his sleep and went away with the pin of the beam and with the well. And she said unto him, How can thou say, Lord, of God, when thine heart is not as God? It oh, came to pass when she pressed him daily with her word and heard him, so that his soul was vexed unto death. And he told her all his heart and said unto her, Rather operate over some mind, for I have been lying to you and asked you, and my mother will come to my house. If I have shaken in the next time I go to you, and I shall have been lying like that. And when Delilah saw that he had told her with all his heart, she sent and called for the Lord to the Philippines, and saying, Come up to this once, for he had showed me all his heart. Then the Lord of Philippines came up unto her and, and brought money in their hand. And she made his seat on her knees, and she called for a man. 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 She called And she said, The Philippines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. The devil is still human. He went out to the house and brought him down to the house and bound him in the shelters of the house. And he did cry in the house. Let's go ahead. Father God, in heaven, thank you, Lord, for your words, Lord. These are very important words you have showed unto us this morning, this day. Father God, help us meditate upon this word that we may see ourselves in the life of Samson. Our Father God, forgive me for my sin. Allow me, Lord, to deliver your message, Lord. Move my heart and my lips, Lord, that your word will pass from me and be, uh, be heard by all of us, including myself. All of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Delilah. Uh, we have a neighbor named Delilah. And Delilah, by the way, means feeble or, or feeling like a, uh, it's like a, something that is weak. That's been the meaning of Delilah. Uh, we have songs about it. Uh, by <laughs> okay, we <laughs> so the uh, <laughs> so Delilah, the, Delilah is a very, is a uh, very uh, here we will be able to see who really is Delilah. Now Samson is a Nazarite. He got promised uh, unto the Lord before even born. Uh, and uh, there are only two Nazarites in the Bible, and one is Samson, and one is which <clears throat> Somewhere, amen. Or somewhere, somewhere. Maybe I should put it the next time, amen. <laughs> and uh, and they are dedicated unto the Lord, amen. From the moment they were born until the moment that they died, amen. So basically, they are workers of the Lord. Samson, uh, most judges in Israel during those time are chosen, and they are all ready. But Samson was chosen before he was even born. So it's like a 
he was before he was even born, he was chosen already by the Lord to be a judge. But Samson's life is far from a worker of the Lord. Amen. You know, uh, Samson's life is characterized by lust. Uh, he is characterized by disobedience. He's characterized uh, by pride. It's very far from uh, it's very far from uh, what a worker of the Lord uh, should be. And uh, there is a there is a commandment among the Israelites uh, given by the Lord that they should not uh, they should not uh, marry among the Canaanite race, like uh, the Jebusite, the Parasite, the Parasite, the Perisite, the Philistines. Uh, Canaanites in general, Hittites, uh, and uh, and the uh, Philistines are are one of them, and being Canaanites, and uh, but Samson, the, the wife, the first wife of Samson is the woman from Timnath. She has no name, she has no name, but she's from Timnath, uh, which is in Philistine, and uh, and then the second one is a harlot from Philistine. Maybe she's the most beautiful of them. Uh, because she's a harlot, and Samson uh, took her. Now, uh, I think that, that harlot and his and her father got burned by the Philistines because they cannot get the witness of, uh, of uh, Samson. Now, the Bible tells us that <clears throat> Samson loved Delilah. Now, they say <laughs> there's a first time we're in that woman from the Philistines, some of the Philistines, not a name. Life, you know, and uh, and the Bible tells us that Samson loved a woman. You know? mm -hmm. She loved her. She loved Delilah. You know? That's why no wonder there's a song about it because uh, Samson loved Delilah. Now, Delilah is a. Uh, I told you last time that the Philistines is a picture of sin. So Delilah, uh, Delilah being a Philistine is a picture of sin or temptation of sin. Amen. And uh, we can go through the, the, the passage of scripture and see uh, what uh, what can we get. It's a story of love, it's a story of lies, and a story of loss. The first one about the story of love. The Bible tells us that Samson loved a woman. Amen. And so this is the first time that the Bible tells us that Samson loved a woman. The day before, I think, she likes the woman, as in uh, she's beautiful. Like you see a, a in a, in a TV, wow, she's beautiful, uh, and uh, and um, people are very enamored with them. Like like you see on, on Instagram, you see on on uh, YouTube, you see on TikTok. Those beautiful women, you know? and uh, they're beautiful. It's almost like a, that's the feeling of Samson towards this woman. Samson never liked the Israelite woman. She always liked strange women uh, from the Philistine. So it's a uh, disobedience from the command of the Lord. A, uh, a worker of the Lord, the children of the Lord, should get a wife from among the Israelite. But Samson la always loved the woman of the Philistine. There must be something in them that they like. Maybe some people can be fascinated by some people you know? uh, in Macau. There are many Russians, apparently. Um, apparently, many Chinese men are fascinated with uh, tall, tall, uh, blind women. So they bring in the Russians, and their fantasies are, are fulfilled. And uh, and uh, some some probably is like that. He got a fascination <coughs> for this uh, woman of, uh, from among the enemy. And this time, he fall in love, you know? he fall in love, and, uh, and uh, he fall in love, and um, his desires are there, you know, you know Samson uh, always have this um, fleshy desire. You know, everything that's given us by the Lord is good, you know? even the desire for the opposite sex is good. Because with, uh, without the desire for the opposite sex, we will not properly. Uh, imagine about this, for example, I'm, I'm a single man, and there's no desire at all, and somebody will know you should take Shincha for a wife. I wouldn't take her. 
she's not a relative of mine. Why should I feed her? Why should I get a house for, uh, for her? It's like, a, there's no benefit. There's no benefit. Like, a, uh, because there's no desire, amen? So we are given desire so that you will seek out a person with the opposite sex and you will procreate and have, a, have a, a, a children born from among you. And that's how our race continues. Otherwise, uh, the human race would not be extinct, not only the human race. The animals also have uh, that desire. So the, the desire is there, amen? But we have to control it. Amen? We have to control it. Because the Bible is full of warnings about controlling our sexual desire. In First Corinthians, there's, uh, the, uh, the, many of the Corinthian people are, are, uh, are guilty of uh, this sin. That's why Apostle Paul said, be fornication. Amen. Uh, everything that a man do it without the body. Uh, so uh, and he that committed fornication sin it against his own body. So uh, uh, the Bible give us a lot of uh, in Matthew though this Christ was preaching. Uh, you have heard that uh, you should uh, you should thou shalt not commit adultery, but if you look at another woman with desire in your heart, you committed adultery. So it's mm. not only the doing, it's only the desiring. And uh, and uh, we are we are told that marriage is honorable and that uh, the bed is undivided, meaning, meaning we should not have that sexual desire before our marriage. Amen. Yeah. So uh, the the Bible is uh, full of uh, this uh, thing. But Samson forget about those because he loved uh, he loved that strange woman. Amen. Yeah. He loved that strange woman. That the thing is that even though Samson truly loved Delilah, he's still a sin. Amen? He's still a sin. Why? Because uh, it is forbidden for him to marry or to uh, appropriate with the Philistines because the Philistines are the enemy. Amen? So, so the other character is Delilah. Amen? The Bible tells us that Delilah got promised, uh, what's that? Well, 1100 pieces of silver. It's one of us. I don't know how many lords of pieces. That's five of them. Let's say five. And uh, it's one of them. It's a thousand, one hundred pieces of silver. She will be a millionaire. And today's funny. Uh, when Delilah looked at Samson, she's like, he's her big lottery ticket. <laughs> like, uh, she's like Lokomax. <laughs> and uh, the, all she has to do is to know where the strength of Samson lies. So, Samson, uh, Delilah, uh, uh, like uh, wealth. Amen. Mm -hmm. She loves the wealth, and she will do everything uh, to know to know the. Uh, uh, she she will do everything to get that wealth. Amen. You know when when you love something or somebody, you will do everything. Amen. Mm -hmm. Even I always sit up to buy a PlayStation. She worked in my company, <laughs> making barrels. That's the name of the time because you have to put it in thing, staple it, place it in the box, and I was doing that because per box they got being paid, I don't know, 40 cents per taco or something like that. And then um, she will pay this uh, thing and she get, oh, I earned so much per taco. Uh, the countdown continues. And she will earn a lot of, uh, and then Aaron said, I will work too. And work. After uh, he finished maybe 10 boxes, yeah, okay, I'm done. I finished already my part. But uh, that cannot buy, no, I buy the sweets already. The sweet spark is my part. <laughs> 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 so you will do everything. When you, some, when you love something, you like something, you do everything. I have a uh, namesake. Uh, he's dead already, but uh, he learned that his girlfriend is in Matangas to visit. In the cemetery, the, the girlfriend did not tell where in Batangas and did not tell uh, uh, where are they going, what town. <laughs> so, what did I do? He went to all the cemetery in Batangas. <laughs> and finally, it, around late in the afternoon, found her. You know, when you, when you love, when you love uh, somebody, you will do it. And she just said, You will not do it to me. Yes, of course, I will not do that. <laughs> If you tell me where the cemetery you will go, I will not go. 
<laughs> so uh, you will do something. And the Bible tells us that the Lord of Philippine, Philistines tell Delilah to entice. Entice. And the meaning word entice is to make in gullible. Amen. Uh, gullible or or uh, simple minded to spill out to spill out the secret. Amen. And that's it. That's the the, the thing. Yeah? The, uh, the the tactic of Delilah. Delilah obviously is a very smart girl, but she plays dumb. She plays dumb. You know when you play dumb, the other people will think, "Oh, she's dumb. She's no harm. She's Samson. <laughs> tell me, tell me the, the source of the strength." Like so feeling like a, she's just curious. She's just gullible. And then, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, this, this, this is the playbook of Delilah. And, and when uh, when uh, she approached Samson like that, like Samson feel no harm. Yeah. Now, uh, I think, think of this way that Delilah represents sin. And when sin approaches you, <coughs> and then, uh, because for example, uh, Mr. Murder approaches you, you'll be afraid. It's Mr. Murder. I'm afraid of him. I don't like to be murder. See, Miss Adultery approach you. You'll be afraid of Miss Adultery. Oh, there's only one way to learn. Miss Adultery is there. Mm. But when somebody approaches you, like, she's only a cute little boy named Lie. Just telling a lie. Telling a lie is a. No, no, no. no, it's, not, not, it's only, like, only a like small, small girl, small boy. What harm can it do? Amen. You will not be afraid. Or, or, or the lie is like a puppy. Oh, cute little puppy, cute little puppy. Make a, come in, come in, I'll make you a pet. And basically, that's what we do. We make up our sin. Make them our pet. Make them part of our life. Amen. And uh, the second part of the story is about that story involved lies. Lies. True lies. That's a movie about true lies. Uh, let's say there is a uh, paradox. Uh, the paradox of the devil said, I will never tell the truth. Actually, that's a paradox. You know that? If that is true, the, the devil said, I will never tell the truth. Then that becomes true. But he said, I will never tell the truth. So, actually, that's a paradox. Uh, I don't know why they, why they remember the paradox. Was it a new paradox? Something that impossible to happen. Now, the story is about the story of lies. Now, Samson, I told you before that the playbook of the lie is like, she's this cute, uh, not so intelligent girl. Yeah, man, beautiful, but not so intelligent. Samson, tell me the source of your energy. <laughs> why are you so strong? And, uh, and uh, Samson look at uh, uh, his wife, oh, this is this poor little girl. I can tell her everything. She would be, believe everything. And but like, uh, they, Samson was not alarmed that uh, Delilah is asking her, uh, asking him, what's the source of his power? Like, I uh, look at him and I'm like, she's happy. I'm more intelligent than her. I tell her everything and I tell her something. She would not, she would never know that I'm lying. So, uh, and, uh, and and that's the story, and, and the thing is, like Samson is not afraid of Delilah inquiring about this thing. The same small sins, uh, you know, the, the Bible tells us that uh, the Bible tells us that beware of little foxes. Amen. The little foxes eats the vine. Uh, little foxes are cute. I mean, have you seen a fox? A fox. We have a uh, you have the fox that you that can grow here. We can see the brown fox, and we can see the coyote. The coyote is a little bigger than the brown ones. And but they you can they, you can see them here in Brampton, both of them. But the little foxes are even smaller than the brown fox. Actually, you look at the internet and you can find panic foxes. There is really small foxes. You will not be afraid now if the people make the threats out of them. And uh, and uh, so Samson looked at Delilah and said, is no harm. The way we look at some of our pets, they're no harm. Amen. The, the way we look at our sin, 
and then say, there's no harm. There's no harm in life. I did not, I did not take money from him, did not, uh, from him, did not hurt him. So uh, you, you tell lies, you know? Or uh, another one is, you're, a pre you're, you're angry with somebody, you cannot forgive that somebody, but when you, uh, when you meet them, hi, how are you? Where you been? I, I really miss you, but you are angry at that person. You might cannot forget that person. So there's anger there, but you're trying to, it seems that like you can control it. You don't want to forgive the person and the anger, you try to hide it yourself, making the anger appear. Or, uh, or there's a temptation in the office. You know, like uh, many of uh, adultery happen, not because the man or the woman wants to commit adultery. You know that? Many of the uh, adulterous couple did not intend to end up like that. They are office workers. Let's go together. Let's eat together. Let's go there together. Uh, we work together. Like you watch Korean movie. They always go together. So there's no harm, you know? But uh, they, 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 they look harmless, but they are temptation. You know? They are temptation. One time you can get drunk. Sometimes you can get lonely. And you will fall suddenly. And when you when you fall suddenly, you committed a great sin against against uh, against the person, against your wife, against God. Amen. But when you look at those temptations, we look at them as a few little pups, as a harmless as a harmless woman, a harmless girl. The way Samson looked at Delilah. So he told he told him, okay, I can tell this woman anything. She would be, tell uh, bind me with seven green wits. What's a, what's a wit? A wit is like a, a empty stain. It's an empty stain of a, of an animal. It's an empty stain of a pig or an empty stain of pig. Uh, when you make longanisa, <laughs> but they don't use it for longanisa. They clean the wheat, the weeds. They clean it, stretch it, and dry it. And when it become dry, when it become dry, it come like leather. It become like leather, and it's, they use it for making the bow and arrow. Like the bow, like the string for the bow, it's very strong. But when it is green, not yet dry, it's very. Uh, it, you can you can uh, you can uh, easily uh, easily destroy it. So some just say, find me with seven green weeds, and I will be uh, I will be able to move. So Delilah got seven green weeds and tied the husband, and after uh, she tied her, Samson, the Philistines are here. The Philistines are here. Or the Philistines actually hiding, hiding, ready to strike. And Samson will get up and destroy the wicks. And then Delilah said, Oh, I thought you told me the truth. Oh, you're lying with me. Uh, <laughs> 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 so as if that uh, Delilah is uh, putting in the impression that she is actually not making harm because the Philistines, uh, the Philistines are still hiding. <laughs> uh, she just wants to test whether Samson is telling the truth. Uh, and then Samson, okay, uh, okay, uh, I'm lying the time. This time I'll tell the truth. Uh, by the way, with uh, new ropes. Now, new ropes are very reasonable. When the ropes are new, then they're very hard to, uh, to break. You know? uh, with my, uh, when uh, long time ago when there's no uh, nylon ropes yet. Nylon can last many years using in a caravan, but uh, the ropes are made from a bakak can last maybe two, two years only, and after two years you have to throw it away because it will become weak and become rotten. So you have to throw it away and get new ones. So these are like about the ropes. And uh, Delilah tied uh, uh, her husband with new, new ropes, and that's it. The Philistines be abundant. And then break the rope again. And then Delilah born again. Oh, you are not telling the truth. You're telling the lies. And, uh, and uh, they see like a more upset with her husband than that. Last time, I don't know what this was. Always want to know my, uh, my, my sick, my, my, uh, my sick, but I think she's harmless. Like, a, like a, the Samson is saying, I think she, she's harmless, but I cannot tell her. I cannot tell her my sick. And then, and then uh, she said, what could, what could be? Like, uh, okay, if you get a web, I mean, a web, I understand it's like 
a, a rope you try tie to the beam and then mix it with the with the spread of his hair and then uh, bound him with that that he will not be able to move the biggest thing is me and then uh, he went out and uh, and carried the beam with him so samson is still uh, but that is very very dangerous because we know the secret of samson is his hair now you make the hair with the web it's like very near the truth mm -hmm. amen it's very near the truth like uh, if i tell aaron and ira that their their mom is at their auntie it's very near the truth because the real mom is cynthia so uh it's like uh, you're getting getting near uh uh the truth and that's the thing with uh that's the thing with when we are being tempted <coughs> and we did not make a firm position against temptation Amen. We will pet it and pet it and pet it, thinking that we can control it. Amen. And the more we pet it, the more we become care uh, careless. Amen. The more we become careless, the more we let our guard down because we think that we can control it. Amen. Like the guy, you know, those uh, over uh, the charmer of the uh, the, the charmer. Do you know that charmer can die from the cobra bite? They're not immune to the cobra bite. But they, the, the only thing about the charmer is they know that the cobra, how it will move when it will strike. And they can move quickly to avoid and, uh, and get it from the back. That's the only skill of the charmer, but they can get killed. But as they go and go and become conscious to it, they think they can do, but they never know, then they become old. And they're becoming slower, the snake will become faster than them, and they get beaten, and then they're chilly or she here, and sometimes they will die. Amen. It's playing with the cobra. Cobra can kill. Sin is like that in our life. Amen. When we become a costume to sin, we treat it as part of our life. Amen. And and when it's part of our life, we think it's harmless, but actually it will uh, it will uh, kill us. Amen. It will kill us. It will destroy our life. Amen. There are so many, uh, many uh, stories like that about uh, there is a woman who is still from her company. Uh, she is still, uh, she's not stealing big money. She's stealing like a month. She is still like five hundred dollar. It will not be discovered by the audit because it's a small quantity. But she did it over 30 years. She did it over 30 years, and somehow an auditor came and did a back, a back track on everything, and she was found to be owing the company millions of dollars. Finally, she has to pay. Amen. But she became a hostile to stealing $500. Maybe later it drop six hundred dollar. There is inflation. I should increase now my stealing from my company. Now it's seven hundred dollar. Amen. It become grow, but it's still a small amount of company. But there will come a time that she becomes so careless. She stole one thousand two hundred dollar. It become noticed by some by the uh, by the auditor, and the auditor did a backtrack and found that she's been doing it for thirty years. Thirty years. She's near to retire. Amen. <laughs> When they discovered that she'd been stealing those money from the company. Why? Because she became a host to doing the same. Amen. And the same become part of their life. Amen. Now be careful with uh, with what we're doing. The more we do, the become it normal with our life. I'll give you an example. Let's say uh, give me uh, something uh, uh, that we are not supposed to do. Let's say uh, we're not supposed to drink, you know, I like uh, alcohol. And I say, oh, it's only a sip. You know, when, uh, when earlier in my life, I drink, uh, I drink alcohol, even though I got married already. Uh, I, I drink alcohol. I get drunk a few times, you know. And I actually will go, will go, especially if I go to Mindoro, I, I drink with my uh, cousins there. I get drunk. And I will uh, pick me up with my cousin and I'm going to ah, ah, like I will be la uh, laughing at me. Amen. And they said, oh, I will not do it again. I don't want to uh, show that I'm drunk in front of my kid. 
So when we re when I returned to uh, Manila, I said, I never drunk again. I never get drunk. So, uh, but we always in uh, in in that company, Coke Palmoli, we used to go out. So I would go out. and said, I will never drink. So I go at the same table. They were drinking beer and and whiskey. I'm drinking set. I'm drinking seven up. So I said, I an ending. So I'm drinking seven up, and then and then after all, uh, yeah. Like a taste a little bit, so they will give me a little bit on it. And this one will not hurt. Mix it with seven up, and you will not even know the difference. You know, like a, okay, 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 I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. So they give me a little bit of that, and after that, they become double that, and pretty soon I'm, I got drunk again. You know? Why? Because uh, you are always in the company. Amen. You know? When you are in the company of temptation, we will not be able to say no sometimes. Amen. Now why the Bible the Bible tells us tame temptation. No, the Bible didn't tell us like that. What's the Bible tell? Flee from temptation. Amen. Flee from temptation. We cannot tame temptation. We cannot confront temptation. We have to flee from temptation. And uh, and uh, the same uh, I have a um, I have a co-worker. She's a born she's a born again Christian. And uh, before I know, I was not born again. I don't even know the meaning of born again Christian during this time. But there is a man who likes her, who likes her, and goes with her and said, "Oh, you cannot do this anymore. I'm getting married already. Don't accompany in my walk, going to the to lunch and everything. It doesn't look good." So she she cut it like that. I'm getting married already. Do not accompany me when I do my lunch. It doesn't look good. Amen. Even though it's normal that uh, we all go together into that uh, restaurant beside our company, she said, I will not do it anymore. Cut it in the first instance, amen? Before it becomes a pet, amen? If it becomes a pet, then it's uh, very hard uh, to, uh, uh, to resist it. But every man is tempted when he's thrown away of his own lust and ties. And when he had to see it, bring it for sin, the sin when it's finished, bring it for death. Amen. When we are thrown away. So Samson, Samson is living with the enemy. And the enemy, after three uh, lies, uh, what is the lie said, every when they wake up, Samson, you've been lying to me. Tell me, tell me the same source. And she do it in the morning and lunch and and afternoon and evening and you know you know like what men do not like a lot of women nagging 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 the meaning of nagging is continuously continuously reminding and reminding and reminding uh, and it wears the woman and basically uh delilah is it's like it's nagging but she make it so sweet Amen. She made it so sweet, but over and over and over and over, the Bible tells us that uh, Samson become weary. Remember the Lord this guy said, there was an unjust judge. Amen. And there was a woman, and the woman said, avenge me from my enemy. Amen. Avenge me. And the Bible tells us that even though the judge do not fear God and regard not man, amen, but because she beg him every day, he is afraid that he will become weary. Amen. So even though he is unjust and do not regard God or man, he said to his heart, I will avenge this woman unless she weary me. And because when you are being weary, everything you will do is just because to get rid. And basically, Samson become weary. Amen. Become weary. And give in. To, uh, uh, to to what, uh, to, to what Delilah, Delilah would say, if you love me, if you love me, tell me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Always like that. Oh, you don't love me anymore. You don't you love me. So, so like over and over again, and the Bible tells us that Samson poured out his heart. Mm -hmm. You know, somehow we know when somebody is telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Somehow. How do you know that he's telling her, oh, he's crying? And he told me that. I know it's the truth. And somehow, Delilah 
seems to know that this is the truth. And some said, I haven't been, uh, ever since I was born, no razor has been under my hair. I mean, the hair is very long, hasn't been cut. So Delilah said, wow, I think this time is true. So she told the Philistine, this time I know this truth. She poured, he poured out his heart on me. So they gave, he, they, they gave her the money, the payment already. And then Delilah made Samson to, to fall asleep on, uh, on her lap. And somebody come and cut all the hair. Samson, the Philistines be a party. <laughs> Samson wake up thinking at the same time. But the Bible tells us something. The Bible and the Lord departed from Samson. Amen. You know when uh, when we are being tempted, amen. Even though we disobey God, the Lord is always with us. Amen. But there will come a time when the Lord will say, "I will let you." taste, I will let you reap what you have sowed. Amen? Amen? Because you will not get a lesson from me, I will learn a lesson by yourself. And basically that's what the meaning of what the Bible tells us that the Lord departed from Samson. Amen? God, he can he can be patient, he has long suffering, but at the end he said, I will not strive with you anymore. Amen? I will give in because the hair is the last symbol that Samson belongs to God. So his body do not belong to God anymore. His mind do not belong unto God anymore. His heart do not belong to God anymore. And the only the one that reminds God that this man belongs to him is the hair. And when that hair is cut, there is nothing in that man to remind God that that man belongs to him. So the Bible tells us that God departed from Samson. Now, so we have heard their love, we have heard their lies. Now, what about the loss? What about the loss? Now, uh, the Bible tells us that when uh, uh, when Samson became weak, that she began to afflict him. Before he is only waking him up. She is only waking up. Samson, the Philistines, be up on But this time, she is afflicting, meaning she is hitting him. She is not afraid to hit him anymore. Hit him. <laughs> Samson, the Philistines, be up on Hitting him. And I said, when, she, when he wake up, thinking it's the same. Same story. I will just go and take out the rope and, uh, and, uh, and uh, be as before. Amen. But... The Lord had departed from him. When he wake up and he tried to uh, fight his enemy and they got called by the enemy, he is nothing. He's just like a normal man. And the Bible and the Bible tells us that they take out his eyes. Amen. They take out his eyes and make him and humiliated him. Amen. Humiliated him and make him to grind in um, in a mill house. Basically, the grinding of those things is given to women. Now, Samson is giving a job that belongs to women. Make him, him lower than men. Amen. And, uh, but Delilah, even though she gained all of those men and able to enjoy the fruits of her lies, then eventually she will die. Amen. Eventually she will die and eventually she will go to hell. And in the air, he will, she will see that she is very close to the person of God, but she was used to bring down the uh, person, that person of God. Amen. The Bible tells us, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Delilah might have gained the thing that she will love, but eventually it will be gone. And Samson. Samson lost everything. Amen. Samson uh, lost is complete. She lost God. Uh, he lost God. Amen. Everything that connects him from God is gone. He is now a prisoner of the Philistine. You know what the Bible tells us? Uh, you know when when uh, when uh, we become when we become born again, the Bible tells us, and ye shall know the truth, and the Lord and the truth shall set you free. 
The truth is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The truth is the Amen. So uh, you will know the Amen and the Amen will set you free. Now, what, where are we going to be set free from? Somebody is enslaving us. Uh, and that somebody that is play, uh, that, uh, enslaving us is sin. See, when sin is with you, it will become your master. Amen. I, uh, I share the gospel to many people uh, in Macau. And some of them are living in adulterous relationship. You know that. People from mm -hmm. Macau here, they know that. They got husband and wife in the Philippines. Uh, they find somebody who has husband and wife in, the, in Macau. And they live together as husband and wife. And sometimes they attend the church together. Thinking that this is my husband, this is my wife. Thinking that they're married couple. No. They're, they're couples are in the Philippines. And they're pretending to be husband and wife. And... Uh, and uh, many times we know the real story because the friends and the one uh, who, who uh, uh, invited uh, them, amen. And we will uh, invite them to to share the gospel, and they will listen. And uh, during the sharing the gospel, they will they will like they're very sad, they almost crying, everything. And we are very happy. Well, I think this this person is being like touched by by God and the word of God. These people will accept the Lord Jesus Christ, and we say, uh, if you believe, uh, if you believe in what you have heard today, are you willing to uh, to accept Jesus Christ? Raise your hand, and they will not raise their hand. Why they will not raise their hand? Because there is something they have a master, now, and they are afraid to lose that master, and that master is sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you know when you become master, when your master is sin, the sin said you cannot go. If you leave, if you accept Jesus now, what happened to your your wife now, your your fake wife here? You will make her, you will make her sad. You will you will abandon her. What will happen to her? Maybe she will cry whole day. You become so, what she will think of you, like a you become convicted. Oh, I, I like this woman. I cannot let her be sad. I cannot let her cry all day. Maybe she will commit suicide if I leave her behind. You know, all of those things. Why? Why are you thinking those things? You are a servant of sin. Amen. You are a servant of sin. Don't you think that God thought about that already? Amen. God is way ahead of us. If we can, think, we can think about those things. God already have provided. Amen. And many of them, most of them, not, not all of them, but just some of them, actually received the Lord Jesus Christ and left their adulterous life behind. And there are some of them that, uh, that uh, got tangled in it already. Like uh, there's one, they, they uh, would like to accept Jesus Christ. The problem is the woman is already pregnant with a, a, a baby from a adulterous relationship. Pastor James said, what shall we do with this? I said, Pastor, I don't really know. <laughs> what will I know? Even me, I pity the woman. The woman has no job. Only the man has a job. And uh, if we separate them, what will happen? I don't know what happened because I, I, I left and moved to Canada. I don't know how Pastor James handled that situation. Like, uh, it's, it's a real situation. That's how when sin entangles you and make you a servant, it make no sense sometimes to leave sin behind. And the world will say, just be like that. Amen. Just be like that. Like it takes faith to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Samson lost his spirituality. He lost his physical strength. Amen. And he lost his spirituality. He became separated from God. Amen. He uh, he lost his fellowship with God. He has no fellowship with God anymore. Like when you are in sin, you lose, you lose fellowship with God. You know, uh, it's, you know when you are in sin, it's very simple. First John 1 9. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just for your sin. It's very simple, amen? Yeah. But many people who are this way would not do that. Because they are thinking, if I give away this to gain God, I will lose this. 
and these are very important to me. That's how sin works in our life. Amen? Sin becomes an important part of our life that we cannot do away with it. Amen? He lost his spiritual discernment. Amen? Before, when you, when you are with God, you know whether you are walking with God. You know, we know. We know when we commit sin. Why? Because we know. Amen? Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I, I committed this yesterday. Blah, 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 blah. Why do you know? Why are you asking for forgiveness? Because you have a spiritual discernment. You know when you have offended God. You know when you committed the sin. But there will come a time that's, that we will not know. If you come so away, away, away from God, you will not know that you committed the sin. And the Bible tells us that and uh, that that when Samson wake up, he wished not that God is not with him for anymore. He do not know that God is not with him anymore. That's a problem with people so deep in sin. They do not know that God is no longer with them. Amen. It's very sad. They will have to suffer the consequences and that's how they will know that they have offended the Lord. He had lost everything. And why is that? Because of sin. She desired sin, she slept with sin, and she makes sin his pet. Like a, like a, a pet, a puppy. A something that is, she thinks that is uh, inferior to him. But actually, sin is always, uh, we are always vulnerable with sin. How many pastors have you, have you heard committed adultery? Many, amen. How many uh, uh, Sunday school teacher had committed adultery? Many. How many uh, church officers sometimes invest some money from church? Many. Those are workers of the Lord, and yet they committed those sins, amen. Why? Because there are signs, there are temptations, and they are not able to say no to those temptations. Because of that, they will lose their testimony. Amen. Testimony is the most special thing when we are Christians. Mm -hmm. People can get saved because of our testimony. And when we lose our testimony, we will not be of service to the Lord anymore. Amen. We will be a bad example. Not a good example, but a bad example. When you are a good example, children, this is a picture of somebody who does not smoke. Copy him. Make him a model. When you become a bad example, this is a picture of somebody who's small. Do not have his life. Amen. So we lose that person lose his testimony. Samson lost his testimony. Why? Because he did not live for the sin. Amen. So can can we can a Christian be like Samson? Of course, there are many Christians who are like Samson. And the sad thing is. They do not know that they are Samson. They think that they are strong spiritually. They think that they can say not to sin anytime. They think that can, that cannot be done at the moment. The Bible tells us that uh, you should be worried. Amen. Because you think that you are standing lest you fall. Amen. When you think that you are standing, it's the only time. It is the time wherein you are ripe for the reaping. You think that you are strong, but actually you are weak. We are only strong when we say, Lord, I am weak. Help me. Amen. Because by our, when we are weak, amen, the strength of the Lord will be with us. Let's bow our heads and pray. My Father God in heaven, thank you, Lord, for the story of Samson, Lord. Lord, sad to say, Lord, but we are Samson many times. We think sometimes that we are strong. We think sometimes that we cannot be tempted. We think sometimes that uh, we can defeat the enemy head on. But then we know that we are wrong because many times, Lord, we fall. We have committed sins against you. Our Father God, forgive us. Lord, help us, Lord. One thing we desire of you, Lord, do not let our heart be hardened, Lord, that we will be uh, naive against the advance of sin in our life. Our Father God, help us that we may open our eyes against uh, the, the onslaught of the enemy, against the attack of the enemy in our life. 
the body guard help us Lord, open our eyes that we may be sober, always vigilant and his plan. Body guard in this time of invitation, help us Lord, that we may have our own soul, Lord, so that Lord, our ministry, our, our spirit of life will not be taken away from us. <clears throat> My brother and sister, the invitation is clear. I don't know what type of temptation you face every day, but I do believe we all have a weakness in our life. A weakness that we probably are the only one who know about it. Our brothers, our sisters, our pastor in the church do not know about it. And you are the only one who know about your weakness. And probably you are the only one who know the temptation that is inching towards you. I tell you, the moment you say I'm strong, I can resist the devil, you have lost already. Because we are not strong enough to resist temptation. We are not strong enough uh, on our own to uh, fight the devil. But we can fight the temptation. We can fight the, uh, the devil because of the Lord. The Lord said, flee from temptation. Flee from lust. And we, the, the moment we recognize this temptation, we should say no. We should flee from them because that's the only recommendation by the Bible. My brothers and sisters, I want you to call to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. I want to be of service to you. I don't want to fall like Samson. Help me, Lord. Lord, take out the self-righteousness in my heart. Take out the uh, hatred burden in my heart. in my heart. Take out, Lord, the, hot, the last burden in my heart. And Lord, govern me, Lord. Lead my steps, Lord. I want that to be your prayer today. So that the victory can be yours. So, Father God in heaven, we thank you all for your message today. Thank you all for reminding about you. Lord, we are guilty before you, Lord. Father God, help us, Lord, that we may be able to continue 
in you, Lord. Oh, this world has offered so many things to us, Lord. Entice us, Lord. Entice us, Lord. The Father God, help us to resist this temptation. So that victory can be ours. And that victory, Lord, can be offered unto you. Yes. Father, Father God, as we end our um, gathering today, we ask you, Lord, to continue to protect us, Lord. Guide us, Lord, in our steps. Help us, Lord, in our daily lives. And provide for our needs. Help us, Lord, that we may be a, a minister unto those people who need our help, Lord. And help us, Lord, that through us, other people may, 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 may know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, to, to continue to bless us. So we see friends in Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.